course developers and welcome to a new open class. We are today in open class number 176 and today we are going to be uh, talking and checking a little bit about uh, Rust which is, which is a, a programming language which is uh, quite new. It has been develop, developed by the Mozilla Corporation and it's gaining quite some attention lately. Uh, so we are going to see how we can create a Rust node for ROS2. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, hello, everybody. I hope everything is fine. I hope video is fine, audio is fine. So I'm going to switch already here to my to my computer screen. Let me do that um, right now. There we go. All right, so yeah, let me log in and go to the live... Uh, live streaming uh, page, uh, open class here, all right, here. then, um, yep, so, I don't see, I don't see any, any, any comments so far here in the chat, I think, so I will assume that everything is going fine, as for the, for the video and for the audio, then, yeah, so, in order to uh, start with the class, so right before we get uh, we get started, what all of you should do is to fork and open the class project. Yeah, we are going to be working in a in an online project which uh, we uh, name a project. And in order to get a copy of this project, all you have to do is to click here in the button which is right above the chat. So I'm going to click here myself. Let me do it right now. There we go. All right, and there as you go. can see, this is going to bring you directly to the to the project main page, which is the one I have here. This is still loading. It might take some seconds, so just have some patience. And here in the right side, you are going to have the the streaming panel with the with the live video, the chat in order to comment, to put there your questions, whatever you want. So I, I'm going to actually remove this from my uh, view because I want to have some I, more space uh, for 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 the project itself, for the project for itself. Hello, hello, Adrian. Welcome to this open class. All right, then, uh, yeah, so here I have my project which is uh, being loaded, then as soon as uh, you guys click on, on, on this button in order to fork the class project, you are going to be redir redirected here, but also you are going to uh, get into your account. If you go here to the My Rojects button in the left menu, you are going to get a copy of this project for you. All right, and this copy, you are going to have it uh, forever, let's say, yeah? So not only for today, but if you, if you want to access this project uh, uh, tomorrow, next week, next month, whatever, you are going to be able to do so. All right? Then, um, yeah. So let me go back to my project page. Here I have it. It has already loaded. And as soon as, uh, as it loads, you are going to see that it's going to open automatically the, the project notebook, which you can see here. And uh, here in the, in the notebook, basically, you you are going to find all the instructions, code, uh, commands, etc., that we are going to be reviewing during during this class. All right. So this is going to be like the reference for the for the for the class for everything we do. So um, so yeah, uh, I am already set up, but I want to wait uh, until uh, you guys have uh, opened the project so that we can start all of us from the from the same point. So let me ask you right now, have you, have you been able to open the project? Are you in the same page as I am? Uh, still loading? Atlan, Atlan says yes. Okay. All right, so meanwhile, I am waiting here. Let, let me ask you, do you have any previous experience with Rust? Do you know this programming language? All 
or not at all? No, says Lujiang. Alan Luis Di Carro says a little. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, so, uh, well, actually, me neither, all right? So <laughs> I'm going to, to tell you this. Uh, I have uh, basically no experience with Rust. So, um, so yeah, don't expect from today's class to learn uh, Rust, all right? Because, uh, uh, well, basically, there, there's, there's not much time for that, and it's not the purpose of the class, okay? So we are going to be checking some Rust code. But basically, what I want to show you is how you can um, create Rust to nodes with Rust, all right? So what are the steps to create a Rust package for Rust 2, how to uh, create a, a, a Rust script, how to build it into a, a, a Rust 2 package, how to execute it, etc. Okay, but we are not going to be reviewing uh, in detail all the Rust code. Yeah, basically because me myself, uh, 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 I don't know much about Rust. Okay, so it's something that I want to learn in the in the uh, in the future. So uh, yeah, then let's get started. All right, then um, first of all, we are going to start uh, a simulation because uh, by the end of the class, we are going to be executing some code here and uh, in order to command uh, a robot. It's going to be our final goal. So um, in order to do that, let's just start by launching the uh, simulation in this uh, project. And here you have the command that you have to execute in order to start the simulation, all right? So the very first thing that we are going to do is to uh, open a shell, a terminal, so that we can execute these commands. Then in order to open a terminal, you have to come here to the bottom menu with all the uh, different uh, icons and click on the first one, which says Web Shell. All right, once you click here, this is going to start a new blank terminal, as you can see here. And then uh, all, all you have to do is to copy the commands from here from the notebook and paste them directly here into the, um, into the shell, into the terminal, all right? The, Linu the Linux uh, shell. And then this is going to start uh, all the processes in order to launch this uh, ROS2 Gazebo simulation. All right, there we go. Here, as you can see, a Gazebo window has popped up in the ROS jet. And in a, few sec in a few seconds, I should be able to see the uh, Gazebo simulation here. There we go. Okay, so here I have my simulation launch. Now, uh, it might be possible but that for some of you, when you start the simulation, uh, the robot doesn't appear. Okay, so you have all the world and everything, but the, the robot, this little guy here in the middle, uh, it doesn't appear, it doesn't spawn for you, okay? If that is the case, don't worry. Uh, sometimes it happens. All you have to do is to come here to the shell, Control C, press Control C to stop, and then execute again the last command in order to restart the simulation. Okay, as I am doing right now. And then the second time is going to load properly. All right? Okay. Then once you have the simulation running, you are going to leave it here running in the background and let's go back to the notebook. All right? Then Rust 2 with Rust. So as I was uh, saying in the introduction, Rust is a quite modern computer programming language that has been developed by Mozilla in, to, in 2010. So basically, it, uh, uh, it's uh, much younger than, uh, than probably all of us. Yeah, it has like uh, 13 years. So it's quite uh, young, yeah, in comparison with other programming uh, languages. Then Rust is used for three essential purposes in programming, performance, safety, and memory management. 
Yeah. So Rust is very good in uh, these points. It has other advantages, also some other advantages. But basically, the three most important points and strong points from Rust are performance, safety, and memory management. Yeah. So especially, Rust has gained recognition for its focus on memory, safety, and performance, making in making it a favorable choice for systems uh, programming web for systems programming web applications and game development. All right, and because because of all of the all of uh, all of these, uh, so recently it has also gained some attention from the robotics world, and uh, so is that that even uh, the community, the Rust community, has created some libraries in order to be able to incorporate Rust into Rust2, so that uh, the uh, Rust2 developers can create also nodes in Rust. All right. And this is what we are going to be seeing today. We are going to start from the beginning, creating a, a Rust, um, a, a Rust to package for Rust. We are going to create a basic, simple node. We are going to build it, compile it, and then at the end we are going to create a, a, a bit, a little bit more complex node in order to control this robot that we have here. All right. Yep. So far, so good. <coughs> um, is Rust a framework or a language model or both? Well, Rust is basically a programming language, as far as I understand, such as uh, C++, Python, yeah? Yeah, are, are we good to go? All right, then um, Rust uses Cargo, yeah? So Cargo is basically a, 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 a package manager, yeah? Similar, similar to uh, Colcon, for instance, which is, used, uh, which is used for Rust2, or Catkin, which was mainly used for Rust1, yeah? So Rust uses Cargo. Okay, which is also a very powerful uh, package manager. So in order to create a Rust2 package for Rust, we are going to do it using this cargo. Yeah, and the command is as follows. So cargo, new, and then you provide the name of the package that you want to create. Okay, of course, this is a Rust2 package, so it has to be inside the Rust2 workspace, as every Rust2 package that you create. Yeah, you have always to create them inside your workspace and inside the SOC folder of your workspace, all right? So let's come here to the shell, to the terminal, where we are running the simulation, and we are going to leave this one here open, and we are going to open a new one. By clicking here in the uh, add, in the plus button, to, to open a new terminal. I'm going to click here myself, and this is going to open a second terminal, all right? Now here we can execute the commands that we uh, that you have in the notebook in order to create a new Rust2 package for Rust. So let let me copy the commands from here, paste them into the terminal. So first of all we go to the Rust2 workspace src folder, and then we execute this uh, command cargo new and my package, which is going to be the name of the package, the new package that we are going to create. All right. All right, and here we have a created binary application, my package, package. Yeah, so now you can run an ls command and you are going to find here the new package. Yeah, also you can, we can, we can actually open the, the code editor at this point uh, in order to, to check the, the package uh, that has been created uh, using a graphical interface. So for this, you can come again down here to the bottom menu and click on the second icon, which says code editor. Yeah, this is going to open the code editor, which is going to provide you a, a graphical interface for all the uh, all the folders, files that you have inside this project. In this case, if you go inside the Rust2 workspace SRC, you are going to find here the my package. Yeah, by default, you are going to see that it, it is created with a with an SRC folder, 
and a default Rust script, which is this one named main.rs. If you open it, this is just a basic uh, hello world Rust program, and also a cargo.toml uh, file. Okay, this tom file uh, would be the equivalent of the CMake lists, for instance, in, in CMake packages or the setup.py in Python packages. Yeah, here is where we are going to put information uh, and rules for when we want to build our package. All right, we are going to see it in a moment. Then, as you can see, by default, the package doesn't contain a package XML file, which is also a very typical file for ROS and ROS2 packages, right? So this is not created uh, automatically by Cargo, so we are going to have to create it manually. Yeah, This is the next step that we are going to do. So we are going to go inside the package that we have just created. Yeah, We get inside the package, and then we create this package XML file. Yeah? in order to put all the meta metadata about our package. Yeah? So, uh, we can go to the code editor and now we have this package XML file here. If we if you double click on this file, you are going to open it here. And as you can see right now it's uh, the, the file is basically empty because we have just created it. So, what we are going to do is to put some information in, in inside here. And basically, you have the contents that you have to put into this file here in the notebook as well. Yeah? Here under package XML. So you can copy the contents here and paste them directly here into your file. Or control, there we go. All right? So this contains some information, meta information of your package, such as the name, version, description, etc., and also the dependency. Yeah, so this uh, basically this dependency is uh, the client library for uh, Rust. Yeah, so uh, if you have some experience in Rust 2, you probably have seen the RCL CPP, yeah, which is the client library for C and also the RCL Py, right, which is the client library for Python. Yeah, so this RCL. RS is the equivalent, is the client library for Rust. So every uh, Rust package that we create is going to depend on this client library. All right? Okay. Uh, yeah, and as build type also, you are going to see that we have Ament Cargo. Yeah? Of course, this is the uh, the the the. Uh, in order to build this package, we are going to use Cargo. Yeah, this would be the equivalent. Yes, yeah, Ament CMake. Uh, oops, sorry. Let me change here my keyboard. Yeah, the equivalent of. Uh, okay, Spanish. Ament CMake or Ament Python. Yeah, these are the equivalents for uh, the C++ packages or, or CMake packages and for Python packages. All right? Then, once we have uh, created our package, we can compile it if you want. And in order to, to, to compile it, to build it, you can use Colcon build. All right? So, cd rush to workspace and Colcon build. Okay. You could use here, uh, so in order to build this package, you could also use cargo, cargo build, and uh, this uh, uh, cargo tool in order to build it, yeah? But it is also possible to build it with Colcon. So uh, in this example, just for simplicity, I'm going to keep it like this, okay? You can even pass some specific arguments for building a, a, a ROS package like this. Cargo arcs, okay, but this is this is a, uh, uh, a bit more advanced, so I'm going to leave it out of the scope of, of this class. All right, so for now, just uh, we we build it with Colcon, okay, which is also uh, totally possible. All right, then right now we have nothing. We have created our first uh, Rust 
package and uh, we have built it, yeah? So now, let's source our workspace. So now what we are going to do is to actually create our first uh, Rust node, yeah? Then for this, we are going to create a new Rust script, Rust file, inside our package, in, inside the src folder. We are going to name it simple.rs, all right? So let's go here to the code editor and inside the src folder, you can right click here and then select new file. And we are going to create here a new Rust script named simple.rs. There you go. And now we can pass the code that you have here in the notebook directly to the Rust script. Okay. Drink a little bit. All right, I'm going to completely lose my voice. All right. So this is a very, very uh, simple uh, Rust script where we are defining here a main function, yeah? We are initializing uh, the ROS context here. We are creating a node, a new ROS2 node named obi one And then we are just executing a print, yeah? To print a message into the screen, yeah? So very, very basic uh, um, Rust script for ROS2. Yeah, so we are just going to initialize a, a, a ROS2 node named OB1, which, and then we are going to print a message into the screen. Okay? Very simple. Later, we are going to create a more complex one, but let's just start by this, which is super simple. Now, we have the Rust script, but we want to generate an executable from this script. Yeah, we have to generate a binary file, an executable so that we can execute it from, from uh, with Rust 2. Yeah, this is like in C++, you have to generate an executable of the script so that you can execute it, right? Then, in order to generate an executable, I'm going to have to do some modifications to the cargo tom file. Yeah? This cargo tom, remember that uh, some minutes ago, I told you that this TOML file is where we are going to put all the rules for compilation. Yeah, it would be the equivalent, the equivalent to the CMake lists file, for instance, for CMake packages. All right. Then, if we scroll down a little bit, you are going to find here the contents that you should place into this cargo TOML file. Yeah. So I'm going to copy this from the notebook also and paste it here into the tom file of my package yeah and then here basically you can see three uh, three uh, different sections first of all we are indicating the name of our package which is uh, my package in this case yeah and some uh, metadata information such as version authors etc then the bin section here is where we are going to specify the binaries that we are going to generate. So in this case, we are going to generate one binary named simple node from the simple.rs file that we have just created. Yeah? So we are going to build this Rust script into a binary, an executable named simple node. And finally, we have a third section here where we specify the dependencies. Yeah, so we specify the uh, Rust client library, RCL LRS and Anyhow, which this is a, a Rust thing. Yeah. And like this, we are going to be able to generate a binary file from our Rust script. All right. And then at this point, we are able uh, to uh, build again our package. So let's do it. Let's remember to always compile and build in the root of the workspace, yeah? Not, not inside SRC, 
Yeah, not here. Here is where you put your packages, but when you want to build, you have to go to the root of the workspace here. All right. And here we, I'm going to build again my package. Now, let's click here in order to build again the uh, my package, uh, ROS2 package. Right? This is going to take a little bit, especially the first time that you build. Um, it takes a bit longer. Yes, uh, Rust is a language. Exactly. Rust is a programming language. As L Luis Di Carro says. Yeah, so are you following, guys? Have you created the package? Have you created the simple .rs Rust script? Updated the cargo tom file to generate the binary? Yes, no. I am here waiting, already 50 seconds. I, um, it, it shouldn't take much longer, so let's see. It should be finishing soon. Atlan is having an error here, he says, my package error in cargo amend build. Okay, so here Luis Di Carro is giving a, a, um, an advice, I guess. Um, okay, let me see if I get the same error or not. Okay, in my case, he, this is still compiling, so I don't think I'm going to get that error. But yeah, so during my tests, I didn't get this error. So my package error in cargo amend build. So what what about the others? So Luis, have you been able to, to, to build? Has somebody been able to build the package already? Or are you getting any error? Okay, so Luis has been able to build. Okay, mine is taking a bit longer than expected. But yeah, it's going to, to it should finish building sometime soon. Okay, so yeah, so Luis has been able, so then pr uh, Atlan, probably this means that in some of the steps you have done a mistake. Okay, so review, review, everything that you have in your my package, review the cargo tom file, that it looks like this, yeah? Review the package XML, okay? Review also the script, simple RS, yeah? All of these, all the codes, you have them here in the notebook, everything, okay? So maybe maybe you did, you did a mistake while copy-pasting or something like this, so review that everything is correct, okay? All right. <clears throat> oh my, this is already three minutes. Yeah, so one, one, uh, one thing that I have noticed when working with Rust is that uh, compilation times are, uh, are big, especially the first time that you build the, the, the project. Compilation times are quite big. Okay, there are, there's uh, some ways of optimizing this by providing some flags and uh, so on, yeah? But this is something uh, a bit more advanced, so so I didn't want to get into that. Also, it is something more related to actually Rust than Rust 2. Yeah? But you can provide different flags, different profiles when building your, your cargo packages in order to optimize compilation times and, 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 and so on. But yeah, as I was saying, I didn't want to get into that because I think it's too advanced already. And even I, I don't fully understand that because uh, I have been just playing a little bit with Rust and doing some, some quick tests. 
But yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'm just going to have to wait <laughs> here until it finishes building. Uh, Adlan says sorted. I think I needed to select the code instead of using the copy button. Ah, okay. So, so you copied the code with this, and now instead you you uh, copy it like this, right? Okay. Yeah. Sometimes copying with this button it introduces some weird errors. Sometimes, yeah. So, uh, ha have you also Adlan been able to build? Now, th the only one who 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 has not finished it is me. How much time did it take for you guys to, to build it? Lucian waiting. Hmm. Five minutes, damn. This is quite huge, yeah. So in my take, in my previous test, when I was preparing the class, it took like one minute. So, so yeah, I don't know why now it's taking so long. For Lu Luis, it took three minutes, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so meanwhile, meanwhile, this is this is um, this is finishing building. We can analyze if you want a little bit uh, the code. Yeah, th this is not super interesting, but we can see some. We can uh, analyze some things uh, here if you want. So, uh, for instance, we can use. L let me use ChatGPT here. I'm going to go to ChatGPT and ask it for this because uh, he's going to be very good for sure in in analyzing and explaining this programming language. So let me copy the code from here. I need to tell. Please explain line by line the following Rust code. There we go. All right, so yeah, the first line, uh, as we could already deduce, is importing the standard library, yeah, which uh, it, it probably is something similar to the uh, C++ standard library. Then we are using this anyhow, which uh, uh, is a crate in Rust that provides convenient error handling and propagation for functions that return result. It allows for easy error chaining and conversion between different error types. Yeah, so Rust, uh, Rust also is very good for what, from what I have been reading. Rust is also uh, quite good in error handling. Yeah, so it's also a, a strong point from Rust. Yeah. So then this, obviously, this is the main function, which is the entry point of the Rust program. It returns a result type with an empty tuple as the success type and error as the error type. The result type indicates that the function can return either a successful result or an error. So here we are initializing the uh, ROS2 context, right? So this line creates a new instance of the uh, RL, RCLRS context struct, which is part of our ROS2 communication framework for Rust, as we have been discussing already. It uses the command line arguments provided by env args to initialize the context. The question mark operator is used for error propagation. If an error occurs during the creation of the context, it will be returned early from the main function. All right, then here we initialize the node, right? So this line creates a new ROS2 node named Obi-Wan using the uh, create node function. It takes a reference to the previously created context and a string as arguments. And finally, we have the print here, not much to say. And the OK, which is uh, interesting, this line creates an OK variant of the result type, indicating that the main function executed successfully. The empty tuple represents a unit type, indicating that the function doesn't return any meaningful 
any meaningful value upon success. All right, so basically this is the explanation line by line of the, of the Rust script. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus, I don't know what's going on here. Has it, has it finished building for you guys? I don't know why it's taking so long for me. I don't want to stop it, just in case that I interrupt something. But yeah, it's strange to me that this is taking so long. So for you, Lu Jiang. Lu Jiang, has it finished the, the, the build process for you? Ten minutes here, still compiling. Okay. And for Atlan, has it has it has it compiled for you? Atlan? Eight minutes, still waiting. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I actually don't want to stop it because I think it's actually building things. But I don't know why it's taking so long, but definitely it's building things. So if I stop it, it's probably going to stop some processes and I don't want to, to do so. Yeah, so definitely it's creating. I have uh, simple OS. Okay, I'm just going to wait a bit longer and hopefully it's going to finish soon. So, meanwhile, let me, uh, let's me let have a look at the following code that we are going to use, which is uh, a bit more complex, all right? So, uh, we have seen basically here how to create a, a cargo, a Rust package, a, Rust, a new Rust package using cargo. Um, we have seen that we have to add manually the package XML file. We have seen how we can build the uh, uh, package. We can do it using Colcom build as, uh, as CMake or Python packages. Yeah? And we have created the first uh, uh, simple Rust script and build it, generate a binary and executable file from this Rust script, which is what we are doing right now, so that we can execute it. All right? Then, Here we have a, 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 an exercise where I am providing the solution down here that we are going to check right now, which is to create a Rust node, a bit more complex, that actually makes the robot here in the simulation move in circles, like in the GIF that we can see here, where we can see the robot moving in circles. All right? And then here, down here, I provide the code uh, to you for the Rust script and also how we should modify the cargo tom file. Okay, so if this has not finished yet, which doesn't look like, I'm going to explain this. Let's have a look at this code. We can even create already the, the package here, the new file, sorry. So 
I'm going to create this new file inside the SRC, move robot.rs. And uh, then I'm going to copy the code here from the notebook and paste it directly here to the Rust script. All right. So here we can see something a bit more complex. We can analyze it uh, later. You can do it on your own if you want with ChatGPT to see line by line. But on on uh, on a general look, so uh, you can see here also that we you are uh, like importing some things like the twist message, the duration, and here we are uh, you are importing ARC and mutex. This is basically for smart point pointer and for mutex hang handling. All right, for threat locking and uh, all this kind of uh, stuff that in this case we are going to be using here. Okay, then we create here an struct which is similar to C structs with uh, three different uh, types inside. One is a publisher, yeah, this represents a ROS publisher. All right, a data field which is going to contain the twist message and here an, uh, an sleep duration variable, all right? Then here we have this EMPL, all right? Which uh, basically it's uh, an approach for object-oriented programming, okay? This new function that you have here would be something similar to the constructor that you would create in C++, okay? okay? Yeah, and inside the constructor here, you are creating the ROS to node, the da data field. You are creating the publisher, which is going to publish messages into the command bell topic. Okay, you initialize also the sleep duration MS uh, variable, let's say, to uh, one second, 1,000 milliseconds. And then we return here the, uh, the, the instance of move robot, yeah, with the publisher data and its liberation um, values initialized. Okay, then we have a couple of uh, functions here, which are update message, where we basically are putting some values to the twist message. Okay, and we have a publish variable also where uh, he, we check if the, uh, if the uh, received message is a twist, basically. That's what we are doing here. And if so, we publish the message. Okay. And then finally, we have the main function where we check if everything is okay, if the context is okay we are going to call this update message function and the publish function. Okay, and we are going to be repeating this every one second. Okay, we are going to be slipping this thread one second and repeat again while the context, while the ROS2 context is okay. All right, so let's go back here. Or oh, Okay, I'm going to stop this because let me try... A different approach, I don't know. Cargo arcs. Let me try the release mode. Let's see if this goes. Well, let me try to recompile like this one time. It doesn't make any sense already. <coughs> Where I can find the notebook uh, is asking Pedro Fabian. Okay, Pedro, so have you have you accessed the project? Are you inside the project like we are here? Or no? Or are you still in this page? I guess you are still in this page, right? In case in case you are in this page, Pedro. What you have to do is to click on this button here, fork and open the class project, okay? And this is going to take you to the project page, which we are in here, okay? And here you are going to, uh, to see the, um, the notebook, 
you are going to be able to see the notebook, all right? So can I can I have a can I have a, an update from you guys? Have you been able to finish uh, compiling the the package? Yeah, mine mine's still here. I think I'm going to try. Mm. What can I try? Weird. Um, package. Okay, I'm going to try this cargo arcs release. Let's see. Hopefully, this is going to go faster okay okay Lou let's see if this approach works and then maybe you can you can try it too I can seem to download the notebook can you tell me how to save the notebook you, you don't need to save the notebook So the notebook you have it you you have it here inside the project, okay. If you go here to the to the bottom menu with all the options here the the third one you are going to see Jupyter notebook, and and here you can if you close it you can reopen it and and so on. All right. Only the first compile yeah it's only the first one Luis yeah yeah. So it's only the first one, which takes uh, some time. But yeah, during my tests, this was taking like one minute and something. And yeah, then the, the other ones are much faster. But uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. It, it shouldn't take for sure 18 minutes. So, so I don't know. Yeah. So maybe I'm going to try. Okay, let me try to compile the other one, this one. So for this, I need to add the second. Yeah, let's try this. Um, yeah. Already two minutes, which is a lot. <coughs> yeah. Let me add this. Um, and as dependency, of course, I need to add as well the geometry messages, right? Yeah, there we go. I need to add the geometry messages, which contains the twist message as dependency. Oh no, I'm going to try like this. Well, let me try um, to Rust build. I th maybe I c we can try building with cargo directly. It's going to be better. I don't remember the comment. Let me check here. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, so this is the building with Colcon. Building with cargo.
Okay, let me try this approach very quickly. this uh, the look my is okay I'm missing this flag here let me try <coughs> okay um, and then yeah with cargo build inside the package so uh, we can try this let's see if this finishes this goes faster. Yeah, so, sorry for this. I don't know. I don't know why it's taking so much. It was not taking that much during the test. So, yeah. this out let's try like this again yeah but it doesn't have to it doesn't seem like it's having a lot of impact honestly How Luis build it in three minutes? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, also, also me. Uh, so obviously, when I was preparing the notebook and all the class and everything, I was testing all this. And yeah, so I mean, during my tests, uh, it, it was even faster. I mean, it was like compiling in in. I think it was one minute and a half, two minutes maybe, at most. So yeah, I don't know. I really don't know why, but. Um, but yeah, in any case, I mean, if if uh, this doesn't finish in time, so uh, so we can uh, we are going to terminate the class in uh, anyway, and then uh, it's just going to be a matter of waiting. But so eventually, eventually, this is going to build, okay? Yeah. So uh, so it is built like this, uh, as you can see. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe I will investigate a bit on why it's sometimes it takes so much because this is not normal for sure. But uh, but yeah, you can try it later and it's uh, eventually it's going to build. All right. So um, so um, so yeah. Then uh, before before we terminate uh, the class, I wanted to show you to point you here to 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 a new course that we have released. You can find it here at the bottom. In case that you are interested on this and you want to learn a bit more about the details of uh, of uh, how all this works, how to uh, uh, the details of the code, how to how to create subscribers as well, how to integrate launch files, which is it's also possible to integrate all these with launch files and so on. So we have published uh, a new course in our academy, which is Rust to Basics with Rust. I have left a link here. All right, it's a short course where we explain basically the, the, the all these basics a little bit more in detail. Yeah, of course, in, in an open class, there's not much time 
So we have to do things faster. But here you are going to, to be able to practice everything and learn everything uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with more detail. All right, so you have the link here. In case you are interested, just uh, check it out. And um, and yeah, this looks like it's, it doesn't want to build for some reason. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, are the Rust packages built into Rust 2 or they have to be installed? What do you mean exactly? I mean both. So, so packages are built and they are installed. Yeah. So as you can see, if you go to the Rust, if you go to the Rust 2 workspace, inside the install folder, you are going to find here things read. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So both. They are built and they are installed into the workspace. Just a just as regular Rust to packages, okay, Luis. Did you have to build? RCLRS by source? No, I don't think so. I think I think it's possible to 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 install it with binaries. Or I'm not sure, however. <coughs> Sorry. So I think it's possible to install it with binaries. Let me check. <coughs> Damn here. <coughs> yeah, so here you are going to, you are going to find the, the documentation for installing it. But um I think it's possible to install it with binaries, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I cannot be one hundred percent sure on that. Can you use Rust after installing Rust 2? Or, uh, okay, okay, that's a question. Yeah, so no, by default, by default, Rust 2 doesn't come with the Rust support. So you have to do some additional steps, Luis. Yes. I can share with you here the documentation on this so that you can check it out. Let me share it here in the, in the, um, in the chat. There you go. So yeah, it doesn't come by default, but you have to do some additional steps in order to be able to use... Um, to use to use Rust with Rust two, okay. <clears throat> yeah, and this doesn't want to finish for whatever reason. So, <coughs> so yeah, I guess I, I'm going to finish it here. You can leave it there, building building in in your cases, and uh, probably it's going to. Well, for sure, it's going to finish the build at some point. I don't know why it's getting why it's getting um, stressed so so much. I can try one last thing, but I don't think it's going to work. Just to do a cargo build. Hmm. <coughs> Okay. It's actually progressing, but also it's going extremely, extremely slow. So yeah, we are going to have to wait a lot. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to, to finish it here then. Let me read here your last messages. <coughs> when trying to build with Cargo directly, it shows that the build process is getting a bit of stock while updating creates EO. Maybe network bandwidth. That would explain a little bit if it's related to the network bandwidth, because uh, in some cases it goes faster, slower. It doesn't make much sense to me. But yeah, it seems that the workspace has this built and sourced at 
Yes. Yeah, so here in the project we have a this the, we have this installed in 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 a path inside the 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 computer. In this case, yes. Skipping the update makes it built in for me. Colcom build cargo arts. Okay. We can try this suggestion. Let's see. With the cargo arcs. I'm going to wait. <coughs> we can wait these minutes and see if it gets built in time. I mean, it doesn't go for that. And if, if it doesn't build in, in, in four minutes, uh, yeah, then we are going to, to finish the class. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's try this. Thanks, Andres, for, for, the, for, the, for the advice. Here I mean one minute more or less. All right. <clears throat> so let's see. This is still going. Hmm. Couple of minutes. Has somebody else? So, Andres, Andres, I understand that you have been able to build it, right? Already. Uh, have you been able? Have you guys been able to test the this this raster script, the second one, the one for moving the robot? Have you been able to test it and see the robot moving here in in simulation? Also. Uh, I think it was Luis who was able to 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 build it already. Hmm. More than three minutes already, and nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm I'm having the 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 live streamer effect, which means that uh, as soon as you go live, everything stops working as expected. So yeah, I'm going to wait for this additional minute, and if it doesn't build, then let's finish it here, and I will leave it for you. To terminate the build and 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 try and try the codes uh, in the simulation. All right. <clears throat> and if yeah, so if you want to and to get some more detail on the code, an interesting thing that you can do is to also ask ChatGPT. Yeah, as I was doing for the other code. So um, explain in detail the following Rust code. Yeah, this also goes in the line of the uh, of some classes that we have been doing lately related to ChatGPT. Yeah, so very interesting for me myself, which uh, I am very new to Rust. 
Yeah. So it's very interesting to, to, to pass the code to, to ChatGPT so that you can have a better understanding of what's going on in every line. Yeah. For instance, here, Arc and Mutex are used for concurrent programming and managing shared mutable state. Yeah, so you can see many uh, the data explanation with many interesting things here. Yeah, it has finished yet. Okay, <laughs> finally. So, um, so thanks to Andres who who did the the second example, and it works. The world moves. Yeah. Okay. So it has finished also mine in four minutes, just four minutes. Yeah. So, um, all right. Um, yeah. Then let me just update the the tom. Okay, because I want to add here the second binary as well. So I'm going to name it how it was. Uh, actually, let me copy directly from here. So let me add the second binary, which we are naming move robot node and uh, also the dependency geometry messages, which is necessary because in our uh, move robot script, we are using the twist message, yeah, which is from the geometry messages package. So now I'm going to build again. This one should go much faster, I guess. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, so now it has finished. And then here we are able to run the move robot node, which should start moving the robot here in circles. And there we go. Okay. So, uh, yeah. All right, then let's, uh, let's end it here. Thanks again, Andres, for the, for the suggestion on these uh, flags, which saved the day at the end. And uh, yeah, thanks to all of you for being here in the class. I hope that you have learned something new, that uh, maybe you can start trying and learning a bit more on Rust and exploring uh, why it is so interesting. And um, yeah, so uh, thanks to everybody. I'm, we, uh, I'm going to see you again in the next uh, open class. And as always, until the next one, Keep pushing your Ross learning. Bye-bye.